Okay, so this is a replay of uh, me using the Eurocore deck. The reason why I chose this replay is that uh, actually many people said that in many replay that I show, uh, my team is winning big time. Um, and in this case, I guess it's a victory. Actually, I don't remember. Uh, but it certainly was a struggle. So... <laughs> So ultimately, yeah, there was there will be a lot of struggling, and as a result of this, uh, uh, I end up using pretty much everything that I could from my deck. So we'll see this. So as you can see, uh, in this case, we're still fighting as Nasgard. I know that many people are asking me to show other maps, but turns out that this one is my favorite so far. Uh, Gjol is okay, but uh, this one is kind of fun. Especially when you have a tank based deck on the side. Uh, so what I do is early on at the beginning, I'm using my uh, Celtic and I go uh, to intercept whatever can show up in November. Because uh, usually in the beginning, uh, people have a tendency to uh, send chopper and land their command uh, units over here so that they can spawn right here. And we don't want that. So you can see here in my 24, which is flanking. Now, sadly, it's going too fast for my chopper to catch up. There's also an MI 25 over there. Some planes are intercepting, and I just killed one of my own uh, Celtic. The Celtic are really vulnerable to enemy planes. But it's tricky at the beginning. My guys that are now intercepting choppers here. Well, here my MX-10, which are those fast mobile uh, uh, tank, are uh, doing their job. Also, my Crotol, uh, which are uh, escorting my troops, are already out of ammo, which kind of show you a, a weakness of this. And here with my uh, MX-10, I'm just ignoring the fact that there's enemies here. I'm just uh, moving over there to uh, put the pressure on and also gain us some time here. As you can see, we're just a few minutes in and uh, I'm, uh, I have done 600 points. So this is a, a mix of enemy choppers, a few land forces here, and planes, which were killed by either my uh, Celtic or my Crotal. And we did capture November. Here I'm deploying those MX-10, mostly as a a way to uh, attract attention over here until we can build up a kind of proper defense or uh, offense here. But my issue is mostly the fact that uh, I don't really have any certainty about what's over there. There might be a lot of reinforcements or there might not be that much. Also we have reservists here which are cutting our reinforcements a little. So here, for example, my MX-10 are having a hard time. And uh, these are reservists, so very inexpensive. So when you kill them, it's 5 points. When I lose one of those MX-10, uh, it's uh, 30 points. So it's a bad uh, deal to attack that with MX-10. So I'm kind of stuck right now into a, a kind of situation where I cannot reinforce my position here. Uh, that's why I'm using my tornadoes. I killed another group of uh, reservists. Here I'm moving my crotal forward. Because I did use some of those uh, Keti 5x5 uh, five five to refill the ammo. But I'm still stuck with the fact that there is reservist in here. So I call my own reservist here. Oh, here one of my MX-10 is really lagging behind. But you can see how fast it is uh, off-road. 
been faster than the vehicle uh, there. Track vehicle are really slow. Well, here I'm kind of stuck because if I expose myself here, I might lose them. If I pull back, I might lose them there. And while well, here, I'm still waiting for reinforcements and have the points. Also, I'm stuck with the uh, notion that uh, the enemy might come from here or at least start to establish an offensive here, which is what happened in many cases. So I'm moving some reservists here as a recon force and also a stabilization force because I do, don't want to be surprised from that side. Now we have some recon here. Uh, that's a good thing because uh, it will prevent the enemy from sending a surprise chopper force on that side. If we look at the rest of the battlefield, our team seem to be progressing okay in the center. Seem to be struggling on the left side. So, and the score, the enemy is uh, leading. So, so far, uh, it, I will say that it's a draw. Here my re reservist or uh, Emma Schutzen are engaging and clearing those reservist sh Schutzen. A small infantry fight here. All here uh, some uh, infantry are engaging my uh, AMX-10, sadly destroying them. Probably should have uh, pulled them back over here, because I would have had uh, a clean uh, retreat position there, reverse. You can see here uh, my Crotal just uh, killed that pretty quickly. Now my reservists are dying the fire. Sadly, that's one of the issues with the reservists. They are so slow that they have a hard time getting out of Napalm. Now, if we look what's here. So the enemy here is consolidating their defense or actually progressing forward. You can see that I, uh, as I expected, there's a couple of uh, units in here. Here we seem to have shut down another plane. We're receiving artillery fire as well. Actually, I seem to have lost my crotal. Yep, very vulnerable units. Moving in my tornado I IDS to clear out the infantry down there. Sadly, I'm losing it. Killing only a few units there. But you can see that it's clear now that we will have a fight for that area. And also when you look at it, uh, they are also providing a good air-to-air -air capacity. So they are establishing themselves into an offensive or defensive position here. While here they are also progressing slowly, they have good air coverage, and I'm still in a kind of weak state right now, because I lost my crotal probably while uh, not paying attention and focusing over here. While well, here I'm doing some uh, movement with my MX-10. There seem to be some infantry here, that's probably Boratino fire falling on me. So it's clear that we caught their attention. And they are starting to put the pressure on. But they're... Um, interest in keeping air superiority also give an indication that uh, there is certainly more than one player here three, just in the air i count three which are here 
Okay, we're not... So that's four different players which are in that zone over there. So far. Having a few MLRS which are suppressing those conquerors. You light uh, light ATGM ATGM units down there, and at that point, my issue was uh, largely the fact that we did not receive that much resource so, uh, so far. Because look, Oscar wasn't captured, and Quebec wasn't captured either. Well, on their side, they had Delta, and they had Kilo. So they were making more points than us, and the guy here uh, was taking his time to uh, push on uh, Oscar. Now fortunately we were having the center, which was a good thing. I'd probably compensate. Now they uh, start to move in with some BMP2. Keep harassing our force with air units. Hold in some Kyler because I know that my MX-10 won't last long against a proper tank push. And uh, considering the kind of uh, terrain we have here, that will be very close range fighting if the enemy was to attack forward. So as a result, uh, calling in Leopard 2 was not uh, a priority right now. Also, I knew that there was some troops down there. There was even some uh, recon over here. My reservist uh, engaged them by shooting in the air. I'm sure to scare the recons. We also knew that there was a few infantry down there. We saw the BMP coming in. And there was more BMP coming in. Actually, these are T-34 and some ATGM units. I can see that this is only one Spetsnaz and my reservists are having a hard time killing it. On top of that, we're receiving pretty heavy artillery. And they are also defending this area from our allies in an effective manner. While here our team was, uh, as you can see, under the pressure. Which was uh, really dangerous because, uh, as you can see, there was barely any troops to hold here. And uh, the enemy clearly did some proper artillery uh, barrage on this area. Our recon here were briefly spotted. That the Mi-24... 25 was suppressing it. It was really unfortunate because having recon here are really useful. Gives you a heads up on uh, what's going to happen. Now this guy had the uh, light vehicle approach. Somebody in our team was really stressed. Corner Strelsky are really good, the unit. Very dangerous. I'm 
seems that our ally decided to answer this with uh, a chopper increased presence. Probably not the best idea ever. Especially since uh, they were fighting in Mine 24. So here, as you can see, I did deploy more reservists uh, as a recon purpose. And also I did put some more in the back here. So I was starting to make a kind of uh, defense in depth. depth. Because the thing is that if you deploy on a single line, uh, the enemy artillery can completely exterminate you. Here, my crotal shut down a, a good plane, which looked like an SU or something. The crotal are really a great anti air. But uh, when you fire anti air, it's best to move them to another position. Because then the artillery fall on you not long after. So I decided to mostly bring a uh, reservist, as you can see here. Bringing uh, inexpensive reservist. Because if you want to push forward, you need to know what's going on there. And reservists are probably the least expensive re recon you're going to have. Here, that's actually really surprising. AMX-13 actually shooting at T-72A. So they're pushing in with a few tank and also a BMPT, which is a really effective unit. Also combining the two with Berettino. Which is uh, a questionable approach because uh, look, they are even using Berettino against the forest here. So this is a very coordinated attack. Now my uh, main about this attack is that Burattino make napalm and the napalm is just preventing you from proceeding forward. On the other end, they did well at uh, clearing out uh, my force in there, which were minimals. You can already see that they're pushing in now. They're also moving in with the motorized Schutzen. You can see my uh, reserve is now uh, shooting significantly on those uh, motorized uh, Schutzen. What I did not like about that situation is that my reservists uh, were kind of discovered or revealed. So my move to uh, capture that forest back was uh, a little uh, impaired by this. So that is quite a push going on here. A lot of T-55, T-72M1. That is a um, clear... Um, well, they were planning this for a while. So I brought in some Kyder. Because the Kyder, as I said earlier in the uh, deck presentation are great for close quarter combat. Now here's the problem. If I send my Kyler, Kyler inside the forest, they will be too close and they will be engaged by too many tanks at once. So I decided to bring them close in there and you can already see that they're uh, killing a lot of tank already. But um, I will not push any further than here because what you want is to uh, have uh, the flow of enemy under control. Um, with my MX uh, VTT, which are my reservist transport, I'm mostly using them as a kind of distraction 
and suppression. You have a lot of uh, artillery strike, air strike coming in on the position. And here's uh, up to a certain point the mistake they are doing is that they are just sending all their troops into a single position. Here you see Kyler is shooting those reservists. We have a Leclerc here, which is a pretty bad choice of positioning. You can see uh, Akula shut it down. Or destroyed it, actually. I'll hear my reservists are fighting their reservists. Receiving a lot of artillery. Cluster, well, smirch attack as well. They have Akudas, which are extremely dangerous. So this is a well-coordinated attack. It's just uh, perhaps uh, badly executed. Here you can see I deployed some uh, Flag Gepard A2 to prevent any flanking from choppers over there. Receiving a lot of artillery. Now I'm sensing that the enemy uh, has been uh, panicked quite a bit. I moved my Kyler a little. Now with the cluster bomb attack, I'm a little concerned, so I pulled them back. Also, there is the Akula, which are uh, a true danger. So I'm moving in my Crotal, which are panicked also, which is really bad for their accuracy. But you can see the range of those Crotal is really high. As long as you keep them uh, refilled in ammo, that's good. That's one I could have down. So the guy decided to pull back his uh, choppers. It was a welcome thing, but I would have preferred to destroy them. Deadly, you cannot have everything. And those crotal were panic, which uh, does impact their accuracy significantly. They only have uh, four missile each, also, so there was only one missile remaining. Well, here we're having a kind of a firefight between reservists and some troops down there. Another artillery strike, or actually MLRS strike on my Crotal there. On my Kyler, which is a bad thing for me. The thing is that uh, here we were actually two or three uh, people committed to that position. Uh, but uh, the two that were with me on the ground were not necessarily that uh, good with their units. For example, this guy here moved his Mephisto on the border there, attracting the enemy fire. Mephisto are using a TGM, so you want them to have as much range and distance with the target they are shooting. But Kyler on the other end, as you can see, they are doing a great job. And also the Kyler are ranking up by killing everything. So ultimately, you gain your experience from being an effective unit, as opposed to uh, putting experience uh, start within your deck. On that side, I had some ATGM melee here. They did uh, their job, but lost one group. My Kyler did survive uh, pretty good. But they did not really attack much from there other than with some infantry. Thor launcher, that's a really good uh, packed unit. Be a, a dogfight up there. Okay. 
also a kind of counter-attack going on here. A lot of fire, which was likely dropped by Mirage uh, planes from one of my allies. Now the fact that they move forward uh, encouraged me to move forward as well. Uh, because I wanted to support them. Not sure it was a good idea, because as you can see, Buratino are hurting me. With all the fire. So that's why I decided to uh, pull back again. Also, there's artery falling on me, as you can see here. So they really have uh, the whole package of combined operation coming my way. So I'm putting back my um, Kyler and I hope to fix them. Because they are really damaged. There's one which has uh, only one square of uh, life remaining. While doing so, I'm still bringing reserve. I'm a little negligent there because I'm not unloading them uh, in time. But this is mostly a recon operation there. Uh, the enemy uh, does think that we have a lot of troops here, which is fortunately not the case. A few Jaeger, but that's not much. We have one unit of Kyder remaining here, probably from uh, the other group that lost something. So it is suppressing its dual uh, APC. Which was containing probably some recon or something. Now, I do notice that there's some movement to the other position. There's still some uh, T-64 BM, which are a really good tank. Never underestimate those uh, T-64 B. Now uh, you can see that the way I'm organizing the front is that uh, I'm resupplying my stuff here. I decided to bring some of those German chopper uh, for supply over here. One of them seemed very slow at landing. Also brought in a recon chopper. And uh, this was uh, likely uh, to ensure that uh, I will see what was going on over there. On the other hand, it's, uh, it's really risky to bring a Tiger uh, uh, chopper or any chopper at this point because look, you have Tor launcher. And these have really good range against Chopper. Not as good as Tungushka, but still pretty good. So this wasn't a recon I brought for fighting, it's really a recon I brought for uh, optic. I'll hear my million F3 kill at T55, which is uh, probably not that good of a kill for a million F3. Better to keep your ammo for more important stuff. On that side, fortunately, our ally managed to capture and advance. Uh, sadly, the enemy decided to uh, swarm quite a bit of stuff. Which might have been adding to Oscar or me. Not sure. Uh, point. While our ally here is doing a leopard uh, push. But he's doing a leopard push without much support, or without really uh, telling us what to do. Or without really considering uh, the status of our force. But I guess it was a good recon. It's just that risking those tank leopard to a 5 like this and especially showing the side of them the enemy and loot one that's uh, much of a risk but you can still see that he's killing stuff question about it now seeing that he was doing that i decided to move my reservist forward as you can see those guys are extremely slow 
So this is definitely not a cavalry charge. So despite the mismanaging his leopard too, he did kill a lot of units, which uh, gave me some confidence. So I decided to move my crotal forward because uh, his tank were completely unsupported uh, near to well, anti-air capacity. So I moved in to support the, him in that way with my crotal. Also here you can see some road and tree following up, or not mine. But it's clear that with those tanks, uh, they needed some anti-air. See that the enemy are, is also sending some SU-25, which are really deadly. Now the issue is that uh, our ally wasn't necessarily using his tank too well. You can see them dying left and right. But you can also see me moving my uh, Kyler closer. But here's the issue we have is that now there's only one Leopard remaining. And we have our anti-air remaining. Also you can see here that there is some anti-air units. Uh, which are just waiting for us to do any flanking or any... Uh, Air-to-air -air interception, I suppose. I'll move my Kyler over here to support my reservist. You can see how the scouting become important for the Kyler because there's no way we'll have seen those uh, Bochonsu uh, over there. Also here I'm having a few shot at that T64M, which uh, are really expensive, about a hundred points. Look at two now. Got three. So these are really good kills. Uh, you can see I'm bringing in some Leclerc, as well as Leopard to A5. So now that means that I'm getting serious. So when you deploy these guys, uh, or serious stuff, you know. Now my problem is that the enemy on the other end, they have a Kula and good anti-air, which I do not have right now. I mean, uh, they have good anti-tank, and I don't have good anti-air, that's why. But with Microtol, I'm able to keep them away. Now my issue on the other end is that I had a single crotal which took a few shots at the enemy, but he missed. Uh, the result of this is that the enemy is now aware that there was one anti-air here. You can be sure that artillery will likely follow. Because th this game is a lot about anticipating what the enemy will do. And uh, you can be sure that, especially in a 10 versus 10, whatever you do will likely be noticed. Artillery is taking care of that. Now somebody is shooting some cluster bomb on my infantry. A bad move. I can see my um, line of reservist or M Emmet uh, Schutzen moving in, while my I keep my leopard and my Leclerc in the back to support. While well, our ally is going strong with the leopards. Now what's interesting also is uh, there is some movement on that side. There is some uh, T-72M1 here which are kind of strong. My allies managed to uh, fight that. 
Now the enemy does have some Baratina. Now that Baratino, Baratino has the uh, merit of having stopped my tank. Here you can also see a lot of ATGM units suppressing our troops there. While my ally decide to continue to push forward, it is a questionable uh, choice because uh, his troops are panicked. So as you can see, they don't aim particularly well, and those enemies are not that strong. On my case, you can see that I'm keeping my lepers and Claire in the back. While our anti are actually protecting us a little, take care of those planes. Now the enemy is probably uh, encouraged by the fact that they did kill quite a few tank there. I'm moving in my uh, heavier tank so that normally that uh, pretty well. They do. So now there's a lot of strong tank here. But my Leclerc are just too strong for them. I'm so I'm kind of micromanaging it. My lepers, one of them is lagging behind, which is a bit of an issue. You can see that my Leclerc are actually taking a missile right in the face and they're still able to fight and they still have a lot of armor. I'm a little concerned by that uh, single T64 BM. My leper to A5, move up to the task. All my uh, German reserve are still uh, holding well. My Crotal did uh, their work once again like, against the enemy planes, but they are out of uh, ammo again. While here we get an enemy attack, which uh, one of my Kyler is taking on. Also, you have my ATGM Milan F3 uh, over there, which is taking care of that. Now, that kind of put me into a defensive move. So, here you can see that I'm leaving my reservist here as a kind of optic uh, option. I'm also receiving a lot of uh, smirch uh, cluster bomb fire. So, here I'm pulling back my best tank. And I will uh, simply uh, turn to the left or perhaps uh, repair and resupply my uh, units. Well, here my Kyler is being uh, supported by more Kylers, which are now uh, probably the best tool I can have uh, at the moment to face that kind of uh, attack. Because the Kyler with the auto cannon is very flexible, and since T55 don't have that much armor on the side, the auto cannon can engage and destroy those T55 uh, really fast. That's another big attack. My TGM Milan are out of uh, ammo, so I'm pulling them back. But the enemy is uh, quickly on their tail. My Recon Tiger is engaging those T55 also. We have a few AMX 10 which are spread out uh, and suppressing the enemy over there. There's a lot of reinforcements, including some ATGM which are still in their chopper. Big mistake there from my ally. Now 
Oh, as you can see here, my Leopard 2A5 are moving into position to help out on that side. I'm bringing some Mistral to take care of those chopper over there, so my Recon uh, Mistrals. Well, here it's really a case of, um, you know, defense and depth. So as the enemy is pushing forward, I have another line of defense here, which is composed of choppers and uh, some light tank. Perfect against infantry and they are really good as long as you don't make them face a super good uh, tank, let's say. Now the big problem I have is really those KA-52, really dangerous stuff. So I'm starting to be low in ammo here, which is not particularly good against a bunch of uh, recon. Well, here my Kyler are still fighting, I lost one. Being my uh, Leopard 2A5 in reserve, as well as Leclerc. But now in that side it's uh, mostly reservists uh, which are still alive. My uh, choppers are receiving some artillery fire, so I'm moving them to another position. I also have a few uh, Celtic, which I'm not sure what I did with. I think this is mostly a kind of psychological uh, presence that uh, is designed to discourage the enemy from taking any action further. While here I'm moving my tank uh, to under artillery fire uh, to a position where they will intercept any enemy reinforcements that might come. But there is still definitely a lot of infantry in that forest. This is a bit of an issue because they have the capacity to scout our position. Now my ATGM Milan uh, did survive uh, miraculously. I didn't manage to pull him out. Now my chopper are all out of uh, useful ammo, I should say. Not so much ammo. But the enemy keep coming, so my Kyler are called uh, the task once uh, again. Intercepting some uh, anti-air uh, shilke. But they are a little too deep into the forest, so I move them a little forward there. And you can see Motostrelsky. So Kyler once again with the cannon proved their worth. It's ideal to suppress enemy infantry. And you can see how they kill them very quickly. Also, uh, the auto cannon make them effective against uh, APCs. As a result, you're able to deal with the uh, enemy in number. So Kyders are really good for uh, forest fight and urban support, let's say. As long as you don't get them too close. But tank versus tank, they might not be the best. Now the issue I have right now with the Kyler's is that they only have three rounds remaining for their main gun. So that's a big issue. Now moving my Mistral uh, to the front because they are recons, but they are also a good anti-chopper. And as you might have noticed, uh, there was a lot of uh, pretty good chopper moving around. Now what I'm doing is I'm pulling back with my uh, different tank. Actually, uh, while I'm doing so... Uh, they are finishing off a few infantry over there, and I'm bringing my supplies now. Because the thing is that uh, you need to remember that those tanks went all the way there, then moving here, then engaging. I needed a lot of supplies for these tanks, and those German chopper are just there to do the task. Also brought in a few more here. I don't. I'm not sure why. Probably did reveal uh, some stuff. For them. Moving in with my uh, APCs now to suppress uh, the infantry remaining in the forest. Calling in more reservists because the reservists are really your recon force in this. Because they attract the enemy fire while your tank finish off the enemy. 
And you can see also that the enemy is using reservists, so uh, it's a pretty even fight from that point of view. And when you look at the score, the enemy is actually leading by uh, probably 5,000 or 6,000. So while on my side it's a pretty even fight, uh, it seems that elsewhere on the battlefield uh, our team is not doing too well. Uh, we can see movement here, so they decided to not attack there again, but attack here instead. And you can also see that they're using smokescreen, which is uh, a good way to do an offensive. But in that case, I did not really have any more troops to uh, use against them. And it's not with an harpoon thing that you do much either. Another big push with the uh, infantry and tank chopper in the back as support. Well, here my Kyler, as you can see, if you look at their rank uh, right now, uh, some of them are elite. So they started, I think they only had two uh, bracket of experience. I can see they are making a line of smoke. Very interesting approach. And it's probably a good approach as well. Now the only issue is that we have some AMX-40 here, which have a visual on the tank. And AMX-40 is also a pretty good tank. Well, my Kyler's are engaging those T-64BM. There's some T-80BV. Big push of tank here again. Lost uh, Leclerc here. Can't set many uh, T80. It's normal. Lost the second one here. We have a few Jaguar which are supporting in the back. But now you can see I'm pulling back my lepers. This is too crazy for only uh, two or two lepers. And you see how my Leclerc were killed really quickly. So this is definitely not the kind of situation you want to keep your uh, leopard in. Well, here you can actually see my Mistral shooting down some Mi-25. So they are very discreet, but they are very useful uh, in terms of keeping the air clear. Because when you rely a lot on your tank, uh, you don't want any chopper around. So here my ally is sacrificing his uh, tank and uh, in my case I'm deploying my leopard to A5 into that small line of trees. The objective of that is to allow the enemy T80 or whatever will come to show themselves here one after the other and just shoot them in the flank. Now fortunately or unfortunately for my plan, uh, as my ally does demonstrate here, the enemy presence was um, no longer a danger. On the other hand, a lot of Motostrelsky, which uh, can be a danger against Stang because of their uh, anti tank capacity. There's a recon here, I target that. There you go. Then re-engaging the Motostrelsky. Calling in some more reserve. I'm bringing in my Kyler here as support. Because they're still making a smoke screen. Which is, by the way, a good way to attack. Especially when you rely on inexpensive troops. Very good way to do things. It's just that in their case, uh, you did not find the right opponent for that. Here I'm, uh, as you can see, I keep calling reservist because what you want is uh, to have a good understanding of what's going on in the fight. And in this case, reservists are ideal for that. They are uh, just spotting stuff for the rest of my army, 
or they are attracting the enemy fire. As you can see they still have some mean to fight, so more T-72. They are also moving in with some uh, troop transport, in which uh, they did not unload them. I think they really wanted to get close and personal with my tank, so that is why I'm pulling them back. My fear was that uh, I will be overwhelmed by the amount. So the thing is that when you have super good units, uh, they are few in number usually and as a result uh, they can get overwhelmed by number and uh, this is a risk and that's why when you have uh, good units especially in destruction uh, pulling back uh, is always an option you should consider like for example fighting those T-72 in the forest will have been a bad idea but by pulling back like this with my Leopard 2 I preserve them and they are even able to shoot down a few of them. While well, here my Kyder are shooting those T4. And there's really no shame in pulling back. <laughs> it's a strategy. And especially when you have good units. If you don't like to pull back, back you just have to rely on a large amount of units. Then you're able to attack constantly and even attacking is the right thing to do. But when you have good units, it's best to be cautious. So I just gave them the forest until I could rebuild some strength. Especially in terms of infantry, because uh, infantry is definitely uh, a key in the forest. Receiving some cluster bomb strike, which I'm not uh, really appreciating. You can see here my kite are receiving a significant amount of fire, as well as, a, as, well as my Mistral. Also my Milan F3, which are shooting some stuff over there. Moving in with my Reservist, which is probably a bad idea. I should have deployed them here, but there was no way of doing back then. I did pull back most of my troops from that forest and just judging by all the artillery falling on it, a good move. Pulling back my Kyler to the supply area, calling in more supply choppers. While my reservists here are dying, yes, but they're also buying me some time. Because while I'm attacking like this, the enemy is not attacking. Which does allow me to position and call more units. And since they are really expensive units here, uh, it's not much of a loss. Also, it does spot the uh, enemies for our troops. And you can see here I did the tornado attack, which killed a significant amount of them. That was an ATAC uh, launch here. Not for me, though. No, nope, attack for Eurocore. Now they're coming in with some uh, T80 BV, as well as T64 uh, BM. These are good units. as well. Also very dangerous. Oh, they decided to bombard this. I'm not sure. I don't think they saw me, but they probably anticipated that they will go that way. So while my troops are stunned, I ordered them to pull back, which take a short moment. Pulling back to the supply area. My Kyler here are fixed, so it will be time to come into fight. I can see that they are pushing hard on us again. Also on that side.
can see here that I'm removing my kiter here where they can have a visual on the enemy coming in without having the proximity. So they are in good position to intercept without risking themselves too much. They're using auto cannon on T72 also, which will stun them and destroy them. Here, since there is close proximity, I'm uh, bringing in reservists. While here, I'm neglecting uh, unloading reservists. I'm probably looking here in this pair for my poor reservist there. Yeah, also by keeping your kiter here, you, you're out of range for many infantry units. Safe position. Need to look at those uh, small uh, advantage like this. Calling in a Tiger AD. Because there was a lot of expensive tank over there. Calling another one here. Take care of that BMP. And uh, the thing is that wh what I noticed is that they had a lot of... Uh, Expensive tank or inexpensive tank in some case, but not so much uh, anti air, so why I brought in those choppers. But usually, I'm really, uh, I'm not really into choppers because uh, they are really easy prey. And you can see here actually, these were the chopper I had earlier that I sent in the back to be uh, rearmed. And now that they did their duty, I'm pulling them back actually moving them elsewhere but it's clear to me that uh, they really were neglecting uh, anti-air capacity actually you can see that there's a, a tour over there pretty much the only anti-air presence there was oh you can also see that I'm uh, Sending my choppers all the way here to get supplies, so that uh, our supplies here are not uh, too much uh, used. So I guess the, the, I'm uh, not much of a team player for that side in that case. Now they managed to kill my uh, command vehicle here, which was a bit of a setback. Well, here with my reservist, I wanted to move into those building to have a visual on what was coming there, a visual which will be safer. I'm also moving in my leopard on that position where they could cover in that angle and that angle. But you can see here another big push. And that time I cannot bring reinforcements right away. I think here I actually pulled back my leopards a little too early. Should have kept them there a little longer. Would have had a good angle over there. But I guess, uh, as you can see from my move, uh, I probably did believe much more into my capacity of destroying the enemy from that line of tree here than uh, from here. And you can see uh, that I'm killing a lot of infantry. I also had uh, some uh, challenger here. Good stuff. Good compliment. We're also dying. But that's probably uh, good because uh, it allowed my tank to take the shot on the flank. My Kyler are still fighting, but this time they're dying just because of the amount of enemy tank. 
Still have some AMX-10, which are doing a good job against the infantry, mostly. And T-72M1 is a really good tank. Oh, artillery on my cutter, that's bad. So I have my uh, kind of heavy tank, which are completed with uh, some AMX-10. AMX-10 is good against the infantry while the heavy tank uh, will take care of the rest. And you can see that they were really angry at my Kyler. I brought another one. But I think at that point I'm kind of low in Kyler tank. There's also all the infantry which was following their tank. Normally it's better to send the infantry first, but uh, it's still pretty tricky to actually attack it. that heal. Because as soon as you show up, uh, all the tanks are shooting you. You can see that there was a lot of stuff coming in. We took back uh, the position by uh, using command vehicles and your command infantry. We probably overdid it, but uh, judging by the pressure that we were receiving, uh, more than one command vehicle was a good idea. Here those the MX hut were actually well positioned. It was very surprising. <laughs> Here I'm mo moving, uh, I didn't move my Kyler back into the position which uh, received all that artillery. Just demonstrate that uh, this position is really good. of artillery falling on me again. Pulling in more uh, supply choppers, which were probably the one all the way over there. I'm really establishing a kind of supply position here where my tank can pull back and fix themselves while the others are keeping the zone. All right, we go with another attack here. My German reservists are holding them. And this time they are attacking with Spetsnaz, so tough infantry. Those huts over there are really well positioned. Very surprising how much they fired for a long time and survived actually. So here the artillery was uh, weakening the Spetsnaz while my uh, reservists were finishing them off. Sadly, there's only so much my reservists can do. While here they were bringing in some cop. It's a weird move. Because uh, you don't put your cub uh, that close to the front. It's kind of suicidal. It's like begging to receive something on the head. Okay, here, what's interesting is I'm using those uh, Peace Rhine because there was a good concentration of E72BU uh, or BI, B1 or something. So I did use a few Peace Rhine to support the area. Well, here I was uh, 
resupplying my stuff here. The reason why I kind of went all the way here to use supplies, uh, I guess I can, can recall this uh, steel supplies from our team, was that um, my impression was that the left side will fall. So I prefer to uh, l take the supplies first prior to the enemy taking them. That's mostly why I did that. While here actually we might have missed it a little. Uh, or did we? Yeah, actually they were uh, attacking me big time here. And I seem to have lost uh, a few units. Fortunately, I had a good amount of reservists, which managed to hold the position in close quarter fights. And I moved my Kyler on that side because uh, there was a lot of supplies, well actually not supplies, but units that went over there. So my uh, thought was that they would attack there, but now they attack here. So that's why the reservists kind of saved the situation there. Close quarter combat. You can see them scouting the place with uh, some inexpensive uh, transport. Actually, they're not that inexpensive. They are a good transport. While here, my Kyler are shooting whatever shows up over there. You can see that they clearly uh, want to attack me now over there. Well, here my uh, reservists are in good position to hold the place. I have also a lot of uh, vehicle that can help out. Now notice how I'm pulling back my Leopard to A5. I'm moving them here because from there they'll be able to shoot everything that shows up at the hill over there. While my Kyler, I keep them in close quarter combat, they are also able to shoot uh, the incoming enemies, but now they're receiving some napalm, so that's why, uh, seeing that it was coming, I ordered them to pull back. So now, pretty big push, a lot of good units. My lippers are sniping them uh, very well. Also, my Kyler here, three, two of them died. And now three of them died. So that just illustrates to you the pressure on the zone. And see, that's a lot of stuff. While here with my lippers, uh, I just saw that coming. So, uh... I'm pulling back because there was way too much pressure, so that will expose my leopard to too much uh, action. More than uh, is recommended. So I'm pulling them back all the way here. Also, one of them is really damaged, so I try to preserve it. While here, you can see that they are still attacking here. So, a lot of pressure, and here it's really a large amount of troops. And you can actually uh, notice that uh, even lagging from all the amount of troops. So now my allies are bringing in some planes for the cub that which were in there are intercepting them. A lot of pressure now. A lot of reinforcements are also coming in. Calling in my Peace Rhine support. My Leopard are kind of out of the fight right now. But hopefully uh, I will fix them quickly. I have some choppers on the way. And this is also uh, allowing me to share the action with some of my allies, I suppose. So that's a lot of troops there. So that's one, two, three, four. So that's at least four players which are rushing like that.
So my leopard are now kind of in the back. But they have the range to still fight even from here. And they're doing so uh, by uh, sniping those guys. Here we have a glorious uh, chieftain charge. The chieftain are actually really good, but they have a slow rate of fire. So I think it's uh, charging like this can be a good idea. But it's a little risky. But at that point we're really pinned down. No question about it. Pulled in a few Jaguar to destroy the Cubs. But there is just too much pressure right now. And keeping my Leopard in over there will have been uh, a sac essentially sacrificing them. In vain. So up to a certain point, all the troops which are here, I are kind of lost just because of the amount of pressure but they're still doing a good fight because uh, I'm, s I'm still uh, shooting down a lot of uh, choppers with those mistral particularly so many choppers are dying from those mistrals And they also have a command vehicle on the zone because here we have two command vehicles and we cannot spawn any more troops here. Here they are really aggressive. But they're, the thing they're using is T-34. So my Leopard don't have much of an issue with T-34. It's just that the main challenge now, because of the amount of enemies, is uh, how you um, how you keep your leopard supplies because the ammo will go away really quickly. So now I can move my leopard back in because whatever came uh, from that place uh, is gone. Sending him a few uh, east rain, but too much on the air over there and now we did kill a lot of vehicle there but uh, there was a lot of infantry as well and this is really a combo uh, which is tough to defeat now my entire area are out of ammo Still have uh, quite a few uh, good tank here and chieftain. Can be pretty good. But it's clear at that point that this place is lost. Eh? Leaving my leopards over there will have uh, mean they will die. So the move I did from moving them here was really good move. Gonna save them. So in this case here, I only have a few reservists remaining. We do have a lot of anti air still, but uh, with the kind of enemy we're facing right now, uh, with T64, there's just no way we can uh, hold it. And now it's all a matter of rebuilding my force and get ready to counterattack. I do have a few chopper here, which are turned out to be uh, coming right in time. So they are killing uh, heavy vehicles. But they are running out of ammo quick. At that point I'm pulling back my supply choppers. Because uh, there really wasn't anything to do with that. Be a good concentration of MI8 over there. So calling in some... a reservist again. 
got um, Milan F3 in this case because I want to be able to shoot those enemies from as far as possible and since it is infantry, if they come here, uh, I will be able to take a few shots at, the, at them prior to them spotting me. Well, here my Tiger are uh, proving their worth. Very uh, fortunate because the enemy did not have that many anti-air. So my Tiger were able to do a good job there. On top of that, my ally here uh, was a big fan of uh, Milan. Or it's very likely that it was pretty much the only units uh, he had left. While here we lost the zone, so they are now able to uh, capture, well, call in troops in here, and that uh, does cost us uh, some arm. As now our troops, which are over here, are exposed to that. While here I'm pushing forward with my leopards. their command vehicle of my tiger which are progressing forward he called in a few anti-air but not, not that many here I kind of did the mistake of sending my tiger uh, too close while the leopards here are still uh, engaging I unload some reservists over here to intercept any potential uh, reinforcements on their part Well, here they are still fighting hard. Striking to preserve my uh, Flak Panzer Gaybird. In vain, sadly. Actually, maybe that. Look at that. Are killing those uh, infantry pretty well. Until uh, they die, sadly. Well, here I'm still harassing the enemy with choppers. I'm not sure I like my approach to this. We'll even say that it's uh, way too risky. But uh, on the other end, my tiger seem to be able to handle it. They are even killing a few uh, uh, tiger, not tiger, but uh, T72. Here, those reservists are getting killed by my own reservists. And also, we do have the zone. I'm coming in with the command infantry. So you can see that slowly I'm regaining control. But I'm still pulling back my lepers to refill their ammo. They only have 17 rounds remaining. And now the problem we have also is the fact that they have troops on the spawn position. So even though we do have the zone, we cannot really call in stuff. Actually, uh, my ally does, but uh, it's a pretty bad idea. Also, the issue I have is that they have a lot of choppers, and uh, the pack uh, choppers are really strong, practical against uh, tank, which are right now my only asset in this fight. So unloading Milan F3 here, which are engaging choppers on the ground and destroying them. Well, my lepers are still engaging the enemy from afar, supporting my reservist. Here I'm actually calling in some uh, anti-air. We seem to have managed to take care of uh, the enemy presence for the most part. There's still a couple remaining, though. Now they do have a BRDM on the zone, so we cannot call more reinforcements. 
My anti-air have uh, some VAB transport, which have auto cannon, perfect for dealing with enemy infantry. Here I'm calling in some uh, uh, Ultram Jaeger and Futch transport. Or Futch. And that transport actually killed the T-72BI-1. So now with the uh, here at infantry, I'm using some Mistral. I cleared out the enemy chopper presence. Also, uh, those VAB are suppressing the enemy infantry. While here I'm neglecting my Fallschirm Jaeger, I'm neglecting my anti-air here. The enemy uh, did drop some napalm on us. My ATGM million are intercepting many uh, tanks which are coming in. Fortunately, they are uh, not visible to the enemy, I believe. While my lepers are getting uh, refilled and rearmed. So those minions are really well positioned because uh, they're shooting everything which comes by. Okay, here, my Milan, Fudge Milan here are shooting those T-64B, hurting them. They don't have much uh, ammo, but at least uh, they can hurt the enemy a little. Have some Fulcher Jaeger over here, which will engage those T-64B. Have some MS Schützen. So I have my millions which are killing T64 over there. Ultram Jaeger are now taking care of those T64B without much problem. And they are also suppressing these infantry very effectively and killing them pretty quickly. Well, here I really did neglect to unload these guys. Probably will have helped a lot. So these Fallschirm Jaeger are in uh, quite a fight right now. Close proximity with a lot of enemy infantry. The enemies keep sending reinforcements uh, from that road where uh, that my ATGM Milan are uh, intercepting with the effective fire. You can see that they're killing a lot of tank in there. And these are not inexpensive tank. These are really good tank they're engaging. With the Fallschirm Jaeger, I put them into the forest where they are most effective in this case. Because this way uh, the enemy cannot shoot at them from afar, they have no choice but to get in range. Well, here I apparently leave uh, those Mephisto to die uh, at the end of the enemy. Sending one Jaguar to destroy uh, whatever uh, anti-air is around, but there's no radar anti-air, apparently. Now at that point, uh, we took the lead. Which is a good thing. And as you can see here, actually, uh, our team lost that position over there. So the enemy had more resource than us at that point. And they were even pushing here. Center was well entrenched, but... Uh, the enemy clearly had more uh, points than us at that point. Well, I guess at that point we can probably take a look at all the wrecks there was on that battlefield. You see that there's uh, at least one wreck per 10 meter. Even more in that zone here. And these are really good units that they uh, just sacrificed there.
That is a lot of stuff. Okay, what is this? Another attack. EADBV. Which my TGM Milan were effectively taking out. Well, here I, I had to kind of pull back with my leopards because uh, the artillery uh, strike were too strong, as well as the anti ground support. Ground support? Oh, actually, the air to ground support. moving back with some reserve once again to scout for my uh, leopard 2 I don't know what that was yeah, I left 25 which was out of ammo getting suppressed by uh, Strela launcher Uh, the problem we had at that point was how the enemy had the zone, so they were able to call in some T-80 BV, very strong tank, and all I had to fight that was some uh, Mistral, which are not fighting force, another fighting force against T-80. I had a few Fallschirm Jaeger, which uh, probably were not that uh, good for the situation. Fortunately, we had some Milan, uh, not Milan, but Lynx tree. Three more than that. A lot of choppers. Some peace rain destroyed the T64 BM. My Faltrim Jaeger are definitely not the kind of unit uh, to use against tank in the uh, open like this. Probably should have pulled back my Fallschirm Jaeger, but since they had a visual on the enemy, it was kind of practical. Kill the Tor launcher here. Uh, the challenge was that uh, now they really uh, add uh, control of the zone. Brought in some FRP-3 million to intercept the enemy fighters, because there was a lot of them. But I think at that point I was starting to be low in uh, troops. I think I was uh, probably about to use my last uh, reservist. And also in terms of tank I was uh, kind of low. And you can see here I'm pulling back my leopards again. Because that many uh, tank over there uh, was unhealthy for my... Uh, Leopards. I was also pulling back my Milan. But now we had the zone. But the big question is uh, if we had the zone because they wanted us to have it and uh, just spawn campus, which uh, seemed to have been the case at that point here. Nonetheless, my Fallschirm Jaeger did kill two T64 BM. Not more. Sadly, not more. While my million were suppressing those anti-air. Yeah, I guess my ally did not realize that uh, calling stuff here will only allow the enemy to kill more of our stuff. Here you can see me calling some Fallschirm Jaeger, and this is really because I was out of reservist. Because uh, at that point, I will not necessarily use Fallschirm Jaeger. It's just that uh, this battle was lasting so long that I was out of reservist.
But a melee transport is also a pretty good uh, vehicle to use to ambush enemy tanks. Moving in some uh, Mistral to climb that hill over here. This way I was hoping to intercept the uh, enemy chopper reinforcements in that zone. Seem to have managed to capture back that forest. So their force, while powerful in tank here, was isolated. Sending my Fulcher Meager into that forest here. Hoping that if the enemy was to move forward, they will be able to at least kill many of them. And I think Fulcher Meager or any regular infantry like that, or elite infantry, in the forest, you don't want to put them on the border of the forest, you put them inside the forest. This way, uh, they have the element of surprise on the enemy vehicles. But the battle will actually end in 18 seconds. So this is, uh, if we check what's going on. So they were starting to attack us over here. Slowly but uh, surely. And there was literally nothing to stop them. We're losing that place. So that was a pretty uh, good round. I think in this... A uh, replay you see the use of everything I was using uh, in the deck except naval stuff but I think this is uh, very uh, representative of uh, how strong this deck can be if used well in the right context and I hope you enjoyed this and let's uh, analyze a little the results so I did kill for 15,000 points of enemy stuff while losing uh, 6 or let's call that 7,000 units points of units so that I did uh, let's see I did 22 percent of the kill uh, from the team and I lost 10 percent of the troops so that just illustrate to you how effective this deck is at surviving and uh, without losing too much stuff of course I did lose a lot of stuff but uh, judging by the pressure I was under uh, I can uh, live with that now, if we see MX-10 did good, uh, much more better than expected, actually. Rotol did okay, did a few kill. Reservist killed a lot. Kyler a lot. Kyler in war. MX-10 did do pretty good, considering. These were the one holding uh, in the field against the attack. Yeah. In the mid-battle, let's say. Tiger did okay, not doing particularly amazing. Milan F3 did kill a few tanks. Kyler, this is one of the Kyler that defended uh, the line of tree uh, in front of the forest. Uh, just seeing the amount of stuff that thing killed, it's a testament to the quality of it. Another Kyler here, did not kill as much, but you need to uh, take into consideration the fact, the fact that Kyders are sharing the, the, the glory there because some of them do the damage while the other one get the kill. Another Kyler here, lots of kills. Another Kyler here, lots of kills again. Even more. Wow, that one was... I uh, hope he does... Uh, he has a medal. Reservist, well, Kyder and uh, a lot. Kill here, reservists, Leclerc. Leclerc, I did not use them too well, but I guess when you look at what they killed, the uh, 64BM, the 64BM, T80BV, these are good kills. Leopard to A5, these I used them during all the match, so. And they did kill a lot of stuff. Look at that. And, and not cheap stuff, you know. T64BM, that's a good kill. T80BV, good kill. T72, it's okay. T4 BV, still. Yeah, it keeps going. 
Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Leclerc. So globally, my two Leclerc didn't have much. I, I have a tendency to misuse them. Tiger Recon. Okay, not much. That's the other Leopard 2A5. Look at that. Four, yeah. Kill. Okay, did not kill as much as the other one, but still very good. Tiger HAD. Did kill a lot here. Another Tiger HAD. Did kill a lot once again. Mistral did kill a lot of uh, choppers. Yeah. And their content. Tornado did well. Kylo did okay. Peace Rhine, that's a plane. Uh, we did not really see them, but they did kill a few. Reservist did okay here. Jaguar did kill three anti air, but nothing really important. Here it did kill three more. Here, uh, four anti air, that's okay. It's a good. Uh, Good kill uh, dead ratio. Here, tigers. These are choppers. I think that the choppers in my, in this game did well because the enemy did not bring much anti chopper anti air. But uh, yeah, it was uh, rather lucky. I was it. Ultra did good. Did kill a lot of T sixty four B, which are actually a good unit. BM also. And that's pretty much it. Now when it comes to loss, I did lose a lot of stuff. Artillery kill me some stuff. E5, Bratino, yeah. There. There's nothing that stand out that much. It's mostly... Uh, oh, look, Pion did kill a lot of my transport. 72A. 5. It's pretty diverse what killed my stuff. And I mostly lost uh, inexpensive stuff. So that was a good game. I hope you appreciate this guide because that's w that was pretty lengthy. Uh, but I think this round was a good illustration of how you can use carefully uh, this deck and have great result. And uh, I think in this battle there was quite a bit of struggle. And the result is a draw. So that was a okay battle. I guess uh, in both sides, I will say people. Some people did not play too well, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it was a struggle just because of the quantity. Uh, I think there was at least five players coming at me when you count the peoples in the air. So I'll see you on my next guide.